Hey, welcome to the next part of the deep dive into the stock team. This is our topic. How do we work together? Well, actually we want to avoid the situation that you're seeing here. And I'm sure uh, every one of us has at least a couple of stories that uh, describe um, such a situation that you've already experienced once in our lives. And um, the first thought that everybody has, and uh, it's the first, first thought in, you know, in many uh, directions, it's like, well, they didn't speak enough. They didn't communicate it enough with each other. Um, that's possibly true, but uh, it's not that easy to just uh, stop at that part where it's always, you know, it's about communication. So let's dive into this a little bit. And um, since this is a, you know, a very, let's say practical, but also very, um, you know, non-touchy way of how do you actually work together? We could start, you know, talking about tools and stuff and, uh, and uh, you know rules and this and that and how you know roles and and this you know um, it's kind of like where do you even you know start with this eel it feels like it's slipping through your hands so I decided to start with something called the ten commandments of working together um, it's like um, basic settings that we need and uh, the first one is don't make quick judgments um, take yourself back, take a step back and uh, try to give yourself time to, to analyze, uh, to see potential, to see capabilities and to uh, avoid or to just stop, you know, bringing negative judgments into the game. Actually, this is a good rule you could use in life as well. Um, second, don't be a smuck or a know-it-all ass. Um, put your ego away and just be open for others. Um, I think you don't have to be afraid. Uh, we all have the, an expertise and skills and talents that we bring um, by acknowledging others' um, experiences, skills and, and, uh, and knowledge that they bring, uh, we do not uh, lose our own. So we, we are all on the same level here. Third one, be open and trust. Very um, easy one to say, um, but I think it's the first uh, door that needs to open. And yes, uh, trust needs to be earned um, normally, but uh, in a situation where you're at the very, very start, uh, we have to uh, get into it, you know, start opening the door by already trusting. At least that's the better way to do it. Number four, try to be able to work with and learn with other people. Um, they might come from completely different uh, ways and backgrounds and they work at different speeds or they think differently. Um, they may not fly at the same altitude. I like that one. Um, it's like, are you very much into the detail or you are the person who has an overview? Um, there's all kinds of different ways where people can come from and just be open to learn from that. Number five, don't argue. <laughs> Easy one. Uh, I guess you remember that from your childhood. Um, try to find a way to talk about different positions, different approaches, different opinions, opinions in a way that is not uh, personal, that is not um, hurting someone. So it's all about the words and the choice of words that you use to be able to uh, have a discussion in an argumentative way or in a non-argumentative way, of course. Number six, don't give up. Very important. Um, be persistent and uh, try it again and again. Um, adapt what you think was not that good 
and uh, go there again. Stay in the saddle. Number seven, work hard. <laughs> Easy to explain. Number eight, acknowledge, acknowledge and share your personal agenda. Um, this again requires trust uh, in the people you work with, but it's very important to also share part of your personal life because it has a big influence on your work life as well. This one is uh, um, an easy one, or let's say it's playing with the words at least as well. You can't always pick your teammates, but you should never pick on them. So don't uh, overdo it and uh, uh, admit if you have not been right about something. Don't take it that seriously. You know, it's not about winning or losing here. It's about uh, walking um, on the same pathway as your team members. Number 10, keep the big picture perspective. Yes, keep the big picture in mind. We are all going somewhere together um, and it's not that important. You know, some things on the way that maybe you disagree or that you have not uh, understood it correctly from the beginning. Okay, now you have 10 rules, but what does it actually mean? What are the factors that determine if you're a, a high performance team? There have been lots of studies around that. Uh, what are high performance teams doing differently to other teams that maybe are not that efficient? Very important to have clear goals. Of course, easy, right? If you don't know where you're going, how can you go there? Communication, as I said uh, before, communication and information flow is of course the backbone in a team. Otherwise, you don't know what has changed maybe in terms of goals. Cohesiveness and unity. Yeah, don't let it happen that someone drifts away. Um, pick up the phone and talk to each other so that you are again together as a team. Trust. Innovation and creativity. What does that mean? I would say being creative is at its core about finding different ways or new ways of connecting the dots and um, being solution oriented um, towards a challenge or problem that you're trying to solve. Maximizing resources, that's for me the uh, keyword um, leading into sustainability. We always um, want to uh, use everything we have as much as possible uh, to, to maximize the outcome in the end. Accountability as a very important point. Don't promise something you can't keep. Uh, not an easy one sometimes, uh, especially when you are a very positive person like I am. Um, I am very often overestimating uh, the time that I have in the day to be able to accomplish everything I want to. Leading to productivity and efficiency. I think all of those uh, points that we just went through um, come together in uh, being productive and uh, using your resources efficiently. Yeah, looks like a easy to do recipe. Um, practically what you have to do is uh, yeah, not uh, that easy to see out of these points. But I want to jump first into the stages of team development so you understand a little bit um, how the team building process actually develops. So in the very first phase, which is called forming, um, which is the phase you're in right now when you're watching um, this uh, session, it's about getting to know each other. It's about finding out what's your tasks. It's about establishing these basic rules uh, of working together and finding um, a way to, to move ahead together finding a mutual approach. When you are 
through that, the next jump up is into the storming phase. Um, there could be a lot of conflict because it's about, um, yeah, the, the differences that uh, make you unique, those strengths that also uh, separate you from others. So it's about these perspectives and interpretations and agreements that, um, that are different, that have to become clear um, and that have to align so that it's working for everyone. That phase is also um, determined by a lot of doubts where maybe uh, members, team members will be looking for guilty parties and the breakup is, is, is quite possible in this stage if you're not able to go through that storming and uh, uh, in a way that you know people don't say that ah, that's enough, I'm leaving. Getting us to the next stage, the norming. So if, uh, if you are able to survive this the storm, you will be uh, entering that phase of, okay, this is how we are creating structures and agreements and rules and uh, distributing the roles. And with, with this conglomerate of agreements, we have a us feeling, we have a we, we are becoming a team with those norms. Only after that, you are entering into the performing phase um, where you can become productive, where everybody knows how things are done, what's your task, and you can really dive into cooperating with others and um, using your strengths to the max, um, executing on the tasks that you have taken over. Now, the motivation and the productivity in these stages, the, the, the curve for that look different. At the beginning, everybody is very high up. It's an interesting idea. You connect it and you're like, yes, we're gonna do something uh, together here. And when the storming hits, motivation is going down. Definitely, especially if you are a person like me, I hate to be in conflict situations. I am trying to avoid that at any cost. And um, that's not good because if you try to avoid um, the storm, you will never be able to pass through that phase, right? So it needs courage to speak up. It needs, um, yeah, maybe a different approach that the storm is not something like a real storm in that sense, but you know that you have a, um, an open climate to discuss and to speak about things that you actually can enter into the norming phase and come together as a team with clear rules and frameworks and, and, and a strategy and a plan how you want to go ahead. With that, the motivation goes up again. Motivation is what's driving us. Um, and motivation is not that easy to um, you know, keep on that level you had it if you are losing team members. So this is actually the fifth stage that was added later on into that concept. Uh, it's called adjourning or mourning. So it's when the project somehow ends or your group work ends and um, you may feel sad that it's falling apart, that you are not working together as a team anymore. And um, that phase is actually, I don't know what kind of a number I can put on it, but that's almost always forgotten, especially these days when everybody's about agile working and you know, you're in five different teams in your company, maybe at the same time. And then uh, suddenly some you know, change in the management and there is three new teams and the other ones are not there. And you know, everything is kind of like, uh, um, taken apart and putting back together again. Well, now you know, based on, on this methodology and theory here, that you are starting at the beginning. If you're having new team members, uh, if only one person changes, you're going through that whole concept again, those four stages. And that's taking time. And that's actually, I think, the reason for for uh, so many areas in our societies to be so unproductive because we can never come to that stage where we can 
um, survive the norming and how we work together to become productive. So what are my personal three tips? Because actually with all this input that I've given you now, um, it doesn't really tell you much more now actually in, in practical terms. Um, I decided to make it three because it's, it's actually harder you know, to remember more than three, but in reality actually, and that, that was the um, recommendation and tips from many um, yeah, business owners that have really become successful, it's the power of one. I would say that's the secret. If you want to really change something, focus on one thing and do that one thing really well. For me, that one thing is clarifying your purpose. What does it mean? Clarifying, what's your mission? What's your value proposition and what's the purpose? Why are you doing what you are doing? This has to become clear so that if I wake you up in the middle of the night and I'll ask you, you will be able to tell me. And all of your team members will be telling me the same thing. That's the glue. It will become clearer throughout the next sessions that we are having together and through really diving into what is the purpose and a mission and a vision. But that's your clue. That's why we have spent so much time now in this team building phase uh, to allow discussions around the ideas you have. Um, and I hope you had much more time that you spend on clarifying this purpose. Do it again in this top team. It's about the glue in your team. You can only create a glue in your team a connection, a real personal connection, if you appreciate each other's differences, right? So it's not just about accepting and you know doing that in your head and in your mind that yeah, this person is coming from a different uh, part of the world. Maybe he or she has a different uh, mother tongue and uh, I know all that in, in my head. But it's really about taking this to a deeper level and appreciate that person the way they are. Um, of course, this needs to come from, you know, all of you as like maybe five people in your team. Um, hopefully can adopt that mindset, that approach to each other, to really appreciate who you are, yourself and who your team members are. So take the time to get to know each other, uh, to have a beer together, to play some games together whatever is possible in these uh, days, spend time together to appreciate these differences because appreciating the differences actually means knowing the differences, right? Then for me, it comes to establishing your team rules. And you could take the example of the 10 commandments. Maybe you can make five or three commandments of rules that how you, you know you want to work together as a team how do you want to approach each other what is important for you in the work between you as team members try to establish some rules around that and that will help you uh, clarify your purpose at the same time i've written the communicate here just as a small reminder because all of this is only possible, we communicate. So I hope you understand the importance of, you know, really coming, coming out and uh, speaking to each other. I know it's very uncomfortable. I'm, I'm fully with you there when I'm in a new situation and I don't know the people. I'm, I'm sitting there in my corner and uh, observing what's going on, trying to take an input from everyone to be able to get a feeling about the people who are there around me. It takes time, but um, just remember communication is the only thing that allows us to uh, 
yeah, work with each other to, to clarify the ways how we can work together in a happy way. And I really like Simon Simic. I don't know if I have uh, his uh, very well-known video with the, the onion actually, but he says just what I tried to uh, tell you in other words, your why provides you with the clarity, the meaning and the direction. It is like a filter through which you can make decisions every day. The why, it's the why, the power of one. Clarify your purpose. Okay. One tip at the end here. This slide here I, is called visualizing teamwork and um, it's a reminder for, for us and for everyone to um, think about these different ways of what work actually means. There's this side here, which is about uh, idea creation. We are in this phase now uh, of sharing our ideas, coming together as a team, and we speak about possibilities. We, we are creative. We uh, connect on, on uh, what is close to our hearts, solutions that we want to bring to this world. That's one kind of a way of, of, of work. But there is the other side, which is the knowledge creation. Um, it's that side where we focus on ex executing, where we are actually uh, fulfilling a certain task. And that these you know ways are, are, are different. So uh, try to put that into your equations and um, allow the time or the, the rules that also apply for these different uh, kind of ways of working um, to have its own space and its own framework. Um, it very possibly will come to the point that, you know, some of your team members are maybe better in this one area and some in the other. So take this with you and adapt it or you know put it into the context of your idea what does it mean where is the knowledge creation and where is more the creativity and the thinking in terms of possibilities thank you very much for listening questions please write down the questions that you have right now after listening to this so maybe in the next minutes write them down somewhere because that's the questions you need to take into the discussions with your team. And that's the questions I'm also very curious to know. Thank you.